<laughs> this is becoming quite a day. They say sometimes that the first day of the month is the most challenging one, and that from that moment on it just goes downhill or uphill of the way you look at it. With God Calling, we're doing a do-over because sometimes in software, for some reason, when I record or something gets recorded over, then if there's another program operating, then it doesn't record it. Simple fix, but sometimes I just neglect to do it. So this is our do-over one more time. And, you know, lots of times that's where we don't realize, I think, that God gives us the opportunity always, you know, all the days of our life, that we're alive, that as long as we're breathing, as long as we're seeking, as long as we're understanding the knowledge that God has given us, the faith that He's placed in us, the initiation of faith that He wants to have us turn to Him, that we can always do over, so to speak, our life, is that we can be every day new every morning because great is His faithfulness to cause us to come to Him, to be renewed by Him, to be refreshed by Him, to be changed by Him as He works in us, both to do and to will of His good pleasure, but that He can, be the Creator of the universe, cause us to be made new or changed in a way that we would never have thought of to become, even as we did when we were first saved, that what we once were has now become what we never thought we could be. And the same thing is true is that after you're saved, God constantly is working to renew and to refresh and to restore you into right relationship with Him so that you would never turn away from God, but that you would turn to God with all of your ways. Because if we acknowledge Him in all of our ways, if we trust in Him with all of our heart, if we seek Him, then He will direct our path and He will direct that path to Himself that we should receive mercy forgiveness, grace, and help in time of need. So it's always a question of going from which way are you going to are you going to Him with whatever it is you're going through. In God calling, how rich you are. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13.5 My children, that word is unfailingly true. Down the centuries, thousands have proved my constancy, my untiringness, my unfailing love. Never leave, never forsake. Not just a presence is meant by this, but me, but my personality, but who I am in relationship to you. My love will never leave you. My understanding will never leave you. My strength will never leave you. Think of all that I am love, then forever you are assured of love, because my love will never leave you. For I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Strength then, in every difficulty and danger, you are sure of strength. For you are my stronghold, and my strength, my shield, and my strong tower, in you whom I trust, I will not be afraid. Patience then always is the one who can never tire. And he is patient with us, long-suffering, always aware of what we are made out of, that he should always be consideration and considerate of us, that we should manifest the same patience towards others that he has with us, long-suffering to the point of extending his mercies which endure forever. Understanding then always you will be understood, because God knows the frame that we are made out of. He knows that we are dust. He understands that we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, and He does that so that we would know what is the perfect and acceptable will of God in Christ Jesus. So He knows us better than we know ourselves as He changes us into His image. Can you fear the future when it holds so much for you? No. Beloved, set your affections on things above, the higher spiritual things, and not on the things on the earth, the lower temporal things, and you will see how rich you are. The reality of God at work in you isn't for you to go out and work through your salvation with fear and trembling only, but rather to allow Him to work in you that accomplished purposes that He's designed to work for you by making in you a reality of a spiritual dimension that would cause you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind and the 
the changing of your spirit to become born again after what he would cause you to be. You see, some things just automatically happen. Is that if you give a plant, like say a plant right here, like this plant, if you give this plant sunlight and water, it grows. The same thing is true in the spiritual dimension. As you are a born again of the spirit, you, as you have water the word, and as you have the light of his love, his countenance, as you're looking to him and he's shining upon you, then you're going to grow. It just happens. The soil that you are, whether it chokes you out or whether it's fertilized or whether it's profitable to you to be developed, is changed by God, the Holy Spirit, doing that. And you can be repotted from going from one church to another that would cause you to grow in a more profitable way as the potter takes the plant and repots you into the place he wants you to grow. So don't be surprised if God moves you someplace to cause you to change and be rearranged in your life to become more like him. Because he is the potter near the clay, and he doesn't just make clay pots, but he makes plantings of the Lord that you should grow up to be trees of righteousness, that God would cause you to grow, regardless of you knowing how much or how little you think you are growing. Because he is the one that's at work in you, to do it to will of his good pleasure.